All right, so it's uh, now time to begin officially. So I'm gonna dive right in to uh, respect your time as well. Uh, so welcome, whether you're watching live tonight or whether you are watching this in the archive. Um, we're going to dive into Boardmaker Online. And this is something in Peel that we've paid for a board license for. Um, to get access to your account though, you will have to request one. Now, any of you that signed up through Frontline for this session tonight, I have, um, with the help of my colleagues, gone through and made sure that you do have accounts. Um, so you would have received an email from Boardmaker uh, asking you to set up your password and whatnot. Um, and if you happen to be joining us and you don't have your account yet, not to worry, you can just kind of sit back and watch tonight. And then afterwards, just connect with either myself or your school's ATRT and we can make sure your account gets created for you. Uh, because we have paid for that, so you get the full paid version of the account and it's available to any um, staff member in Peel, administrators, teachers, um, education resource facilitators. It doesn't matter, we'll, we'll get an account for you. So here we go. Oh, and also just so you know, um, on the screen right now, you'll see the bit.ly link to this slide deck. Um, and also if you're looking at the video description underneath the video, if you click on show more to expand out to see the whole thing, there is a link there you can click on to get to this slide deck. I'm not going to actually go through the slide deck tonight, but it'll be a good reminder and a good resource for all the things that I will show you. But I'm gonna actually go to the Boardmaker website and I'm gonna demonstrate everything live. And we're gonna cross our fingers that Boardmaker behaves. Sometimes it goes a little bit slow, but it's, it's been better lately. All right, so here I am on the Boardmaker website. I'm actually going to see if I can change my zoom a bit so it's a bit bigger for you to see there. Hopefully that helps. Um, first off, right across the top right here, you have your, me your menu bar. My menu bar looks a tad bit different from yours because I have this admin menu on mine. Uh, yours won't have that, but everything else will be the same. And this is kind of your navigation, how you're gonna to get to everything within Boardmaker. Now, I'm going to start out by looking into the side of Boardmaker that lets us create interactive activities. If you've used Boardmaker in the past, you may have just used the one on the CD, and the one on the CD, um, you know, we'd use it to create visuals, to print out, the little picture symbols I'm sure you've seen for visual schedules or some teachers wear them on a lanyard and have different symbols to help with visual supports for their students. And we can still do all that and I'll get to that a bit later. Um, but something that's great about the online version is you can create interactive activities. So that's what I'm gonna focus on at the beginning and at the end I'll show you the principal stuff. So when I think of an activity I'd like to create, I often first kind of browse around and see if someone else has already created that same thing so that I don't have to waste my time reinventing the wheel. So what you can do is go to the activities menu and you can browse in here. Uh, you can have a look at premium activities. These are ones that Boardmaker themselves um, have made as kind of like shining examples of, of great things you can do. So you can go through here and you can you know, just click on any activity. It will give you more information about it. Um, if you see an activity and you're still not sure, even after looking at the description, if it's something you like or not, you can always click the play button um, and you will be able to preview it. Now, um, Boardmaker uses Adobe Flash. So often you'll get this screen. Uh, all you need to do is just click on this and then click on allow and that will then let it start to load. And then you can kind of click through and play the activity and kind of see if it's right for you. So I'm just gonna close that. Um, the premium activities though, there aren't a ton of them. So you're probably at some point going to need something that you can't find in here. So another thing you can do is go to the community activity section and the Boardmaker community is worldwide. You have teachers all over creating things and sharing them. 
So it is just chock full of stuff. And some of it's phenomenally amazing. And some of it's, let's be honest, just not suitable. <laughs> um, it was maybe made with a very particular use in mind and it wouldn't apply to us. But um, tonight I'm gonna imagine that I'd like to create an activity about sorting items that go in the fridge versus items that go in the cupboard. So a skill, you know, you come home from the grocery store, you need to be able to put those things where they go. Um, so I just typed in the word fridge. I could have been more specific, but uh, in this case, it only brought up 17 activities. So that's not too bad. Sometimes you'll type in a word. If you typed in the word color, the word time, you'll come up with maybe a thousand activities. And if so, you can go down the left-hand side here and you can kind of check off these little check boxes. I know it's probably hard for you to see, but they just let you narrow down your search a bit if you're getting too many results. Uh, but in this case, I noticed a nice activity here made by my colleague Joe. I'm going to click on it. Again, I get a little preview. Usually there's a picture right here. I'm not sure why they're not coming up, but that's okay. And again, I could press play. And I get a little preview of what that's like. Great. Looks good to me. If you find an activity you like and you want to keep it for later, there's a plus button right here and that will allow you to save it to your My Board Maker section so that you can find it more easily later. Another thing you can do is if you find something someone else has made and it's not perfect, if you save it to your My Board Maker section, you can edit it later. And that won't impact the original creator's version. You just make your own copy and it lets you kind of fix it up. So that's searching around. Um, you can honestly spend probably hours digging through what other people have made. It's great for inspiration, um, but sometimes you already know what you want and it's better just to make it yourself. Um, so if I go over to the My Board Maker section, this is where you kind of have all of your files and your things. So you're going to see, you know, the one I just found and you can you know, do different things with it here. These blue buttons to the right of each file let you play it, preview it, edit it, um, assign it to students, we'll get to that later, add it to your playlist, move it into a folder, or delete it. So you can kind of all your little control things for each file are right there, which is nice. Um, but I'm gonna dive right into creating because you know, finding stuff that's fairly easy, the creating takes a bit more practice. So first off, I'm going to apologize if I go pretty fast tonight. There's a lot of things I want to make sure I cover. And if you're trying to follow along live right now, you might kind of get behind a bit. So my suggestion to you is if you're trying to follow along and I'm going too fast, then just um, watch. You can always come back to this later. It is going to be recorded and you can come back and play it again and hit pause where, where you need to and rewind it if you need to and whatnot. So. Uh, don't panic or freak out if you if you can't keep up live. That's more than okay. So just to go over what I just did there, I'm on my, my board maker and I clicked on create activity. And when you do that, you get this template picker. There are all kinds of templates built in. So in this case, maybe I want to make a sorting activity. So I chose sorting on the side and then I can see the different options for sorting. Um, I'm gonna point out these little icons that you see right here. This one looks like a sheet of paper. This would be if I wanted to create a printable activity versus this one here looks like a computer screen. That's for creating an interactive activity to play either on a device, like on an iPad or on a smart board, on a Chromebook, it doesn't really matter what device, it would work on anything. So this one here says sorting into two groups with up to 20 items. Sounds good to me. I could also choose, you know, something simpler or something with three groups. So kind of try to find a template as close as to what you want as you can. Um, but I'm going to select this two groups and 20 items. And then your editor will load up.
There it is. I'm going to make this a bit bigger, so hopefully you can see it a bit better. There we go, not too bad. So the editor can be a little bit overwhelming at first, but I want to point out a few things that make it easier. You're going to notice all kinds of red text everywhere, and it looks kind of ugly and overwhelming. Don't worry about the red text. It does not show up when you actually play the activity. All the red text is for is to help you understand how to customize this particular template. Um, customizing the templates is all very um, similar. Once you learn how to do it once, you'll be able to do it to all of them. But if there's any little things that are different, it'll tell you right here. So when you're editing things with BoardMaker Online, my tip number one is do not double click. We're kind of used to that in other types of editing software. If we see something we wanted to edit, like this title right here, we would double click as like our reflex. But in this case, I want to just single click on things. And then I can start typing. Now you'll notice another thing I did not do is I did not delete first. I'm just overwriting. So you don't have to get rid of what's there. You can just click once. It'll select it. You'll notice it's selected because there's a box around it with yellow squares. And then I just start typing and it overwrites what was already there. These templates have a lot of like coding and whatnot behind the scenes to make all the programming work. So you don't want to mess with them too much. If you accidentally like click and drag something somewhere where it shouldn't be, you want to make sure you use your undo button. It's this orange back arrow to kind of put it back where it belonged and then you're fine. But if you mess with things too much, it'll um, not work when you go to play it. So the way board maker works is our, there are all of these buttons. You just click on one and then you start typing on your keyboard the thing you want to put into that button. So in this case, I'm thinking of things that would go in the fridge. So maybe I'm typing milk and then you hit enter on your keyboard. When you hit enter, the symbol sorter comes up and then you can pick whichever symbol you would like. And then you hit select and you'll see it puts it on the button for you. Um, something else that goes in the fridge, maybe orange juice. Now let's say you don't really like any of the little cartoony symbols that come up. You can also go to web search and then for some reason it doesn't automatically search. You have to hit enter again to make it actually search, which is strange, but that's okay. And then they all come up and again, you just pick the one you want and click select. Now in this case here, the picture is so tiny and the words are too big. So I can actually come over to the side to the properties. I can customize things a bit, make the words a bit smaller. So you can always tweak things as you go. Um, so you get the idea. You just keep clicking and type the word, hit enter. pick the picture and select. Let's say you want to use um, real pictures that you've taken with a camera. Um, often for our students that need visual supports, these are can be too abstract for them. Um, sometimes it works better to have the real picture of the real thing. When you're in this screen right here, you can come down to browse. And when you click on that, it will let you browse your computer and pick a picture that you have saved there. So you'd have to, you know, email yourself the pictures or get the pictures onto your computer first somehow, but then you'd be able to, to use those as well. Okay, so I'm not going to take the time to do all 20 squares, but you get the idea. When you're creating the and filling out these templates, you create them as if they're the answer key. So you create it 100% correct. The board maker system when the kids are playing it, it will automatically randomize it each time. So you don't have to worry about kind of making it all random. 
Um, you put it in as if it's correct answers. That's how it knows, you know, what things go where. And then when you play it, it does that for you. So actually, um, now that I've, you know, gotten started and I maybe want to test it out to make sure it's working correctly, I can come up here to the play button and I'm going to hit play. And then this shows me a sample of what it's like. Now, one thing I really love that you're going to notice right here is I didn't finish filling out all 20 squares. Um, but it is automatically noticed that I didn't do that and it has ignored the extra squares. So if you don't need all 20, that's fine. And then this is exactly what it would be like when the students are playing it. So they would just drag the item where it belongs. That doesn't belong there. And you'll notice, you know, if I put it in the wrong spot, it tells me. That doesn't belong there. No. Milk belongs in fridge. So if I get it wrong twice, it supports me. It helps me by showing me where it should go. And then maybe the next time I play it, I might know a bit better where it should go. That's right. Orange juice belongs in fridge. That's right. Pasta belongs in pantry. That doesn't belong there. No, cereal belongs in pantry. Okay, so that's the idea. Now that I've finished previewing it and I'm pretty happy with what it is, I'm going to return to the design mode and I'm going to come up to save. Now, BoardMaker does not automatically save anything. So save early and save often. If you're in the middle of making something and it glitches on you, you could lose all of your work. Or if you just accidentally close it without saving, you would lose all of your work. And it's saving. Perfect. So now that I'm done saving it, I can close the window and you'll see now I'm back on my, my board maker page and that activity I made is right here. If I've taken the time and I've made something super amazing and I want to share it with the world, um, there's a little link that appears right here that says share activity and I can click on that. And then, you know, if I was wanting to make it more easily found, I would take the time to type out a really good description of what it was and, you know, and fill out all of these things. But when it comes to privacy, I would change it from only me. And I could say, I want to make this available to everyone in the whole world. Or I could say, I want to make this available to my organization only. So if you only want to share it with other people in Peel, you could choose that. Or if you want to be super generous and share it all over the world, you could choose everyone. So I'm going to choose that. Now you could take the time to check off, you know, what grade level it's for and what uh, subject area it's about and all of that. Um, and then you just update the file and now that's shared. So if you guys go search now for fridge versus pantry, you're going to find that lovely five minute activity I just made. Usually I wouldn't share something that simple. I would actually finish making it, but just to show you how it works. All right. Um, feel free to ask questions in the chat as we go. Um, I will do my best to kind of keep an eye on that and answer things. Okay, so I'm going to go back to create activity and I'm going to quickly show you one other template and customizing it. Um, just because some of them are a tiny bit different. Let's see if I can find the one I, I need. It's under games, I'm pretty sure. Um, the question is, can we share it only with our students? Yes, you can. Uh, and I will show you after how to assign these activities specifically just to your students. So you don't have to make it public in order to use it with your students. That's not a problem. And can you share with a specific colleague? Yes, you can, Melanie. Um, there's a couple of ways to do that. You can... Um, share it via email. There's a way to kind of send it to one person. And hopefully I can show you that after. You can also create little community groups. Um, under the community menu, you can create a group and invite your colleagues to that group. And then you can share certain activities to that group. And then everyone in that group can kind of see them and collaborate. So I've worked with teams, you know, at schools where everyone at the school 
joins the same group and, and puts everything there, which is awesome. Okay, so I've chosen games and I want to make this identical pairs matching game. I'm going to select it. Uh, is it okay to create with students? Students can't create things with BoardMaker. Um, they won't have accounts in order to access the creator. Uh, students will just get to play whatever it is you create. So when you open this particular um, activity, it looks rather intimidating um, because how you edit it is a lot different. But don't worry, it's it's not too complicated actually. Um, so this is going to make a little card game where you like flip over the cards and try to make a match. But how you tell it what to put on those cards is right here. You you actually double click on this um, top row where it says table five and ten. I don't know why they don't make this look a little more user friendly, but that's that's how it, it is. And so then you type in your first item. And then right here, you pick the symbol, the picture that you want. And then if you like, you can make a sound for that object, uh, customize the feedback text and the feedback sound. I don't usually bother with the audio settings. I just kind of leave the defaults there. Um, but you could if you wanted to get really fancy. So I'm just going to do the one last one here. You get the idea. So it's a bit more boring looking to have to just fill out a table, but that's essentially what you do. And then you just hit OK. And there are some more settings here, and you can go down and customize those settings. This description column here um, lets you know exactly what each of these settings is about. And you can just edit them as you see fit. And then I'm going to hit Save. Now, this is as complicated as it gets. Um, I purposely picked the almost hardest template to customize just to show you the range. So not to worry, 90% of them aren't like this, but I did want you to be aware just in case you come across these ones. And it's saving, thinking about it. Give it a few more seconds and I might give up on it, but okay, I'm getting impatient and I don't want to make you sit there and wait either, but that's the idea. It usually does not take that long to save. Uh, but once you hit save, you'd be able to play it. It's just a card game where you flip them over and make pairs. Oh, look, it did auto save it for me, which is nice. Um, and so I can click the pencil and get back in. Who knows when it auto saved? I might have lost a little bit of my work. No, oh, they're all there. Oh, that's nice. I don't know if that's new or not, but I've never noticed that before. So then I can play it. Find the pairs that are the same. Orange. Apple. Sorry, that's not a match. Orange. Orange. 
You found a match. Banana. Right? So you get the idea. Um, but it makes it a little bit fun. Sorry, that's not a match. Uh, and then I'm going to return to des design mode. Now, when you're here, if you're thinking, oh, whoops, I made a mistake. I need to fix um, something that I customized before. Getting back to it is a little bit tricky. Um, if you look right here on the upper left-hand side, there's a little button that looks like a bunch of pages and a couple of arrows. When you click on that, it slides out um, this page sorter with all the different parts of the activity. And then to get back to that page with the tables and things where you're changing the settings, there's a button right here that says activity settings. And you click on it and you're back here and then you can tweak things if you need to and resave them. So that's that style of interactive activity. Uh, the question is, is it possible to add music so that when the students play, they hear background music? That's a great question. That's not something I have tried to do. I'm not sure. Um, the sounds are usually associated with, you know, if you got the uh, matches correct or incorrect, it gives you a bit of feedback there. But I don't know, maybe it is possible. We could look into that. So I'm going to close that. So you get the idea of, of either finding or making activities. And once you get the hang of editing, it, it is quite quick. I can make a new activity in you know, five or 10 minutes. But now the question is, okay, I've made a bunch of stuff. How do I then get that to my students so that they can use it? There's a couple of ways to do that. I'm gonna show you first the simplest way and then I'll uh, show you a few more options after that. So if I go back up to my menu at the top and I go specifically to the students menu, um, in here you can go to my classroom view. And in my classroom view, you can see um, I've already made some student accounts and I'll show you where you would go to do that in a, in a moment. And I also have uh, a picture of myself. Well, no picture because I didn't add one, but <laughs> the avatar for myself. So I can click on there and I can see different activities. Now you might notice that that matching activity I just made isn't showing up. So to backtrack a minute, I'm gonna close this again. In order to get things to actually show up in your classroom view, you either have to assign it to a student or add it to your playlist. So I'm gonna go back to these little buttons beside each activity and this one here that looks like a person with an, an arrow pointing to their head, that's the assign activity button. When I click on that, it pulls up the list of my students and I can check off which students I want to assign that activity to. Now, I really only suggest this if you have, you know, really different goals for different students. If you're going to be using the same activities with your whole class, there's no point in creating separate student accounts and assigning, you know, the activities to students individually. There's, there'd be no point and you'd just be wasting your time. So if you're going to use the activities with everyone, don't bother making student accounts. In that case, you could just go to this next button. It looks like a bulleted list with a plus on it. And when you click on that, it adds it to your playlist. Now, when I go back to my classroom view and I click on myself, it's going to load my playlist and anything that I've added to it. So you'll see now that identical pairs matching game is showing up. So that's how that works. Now, if you put this up on your smart board, if you have one or your easy teach board, um, or just have it up on a computer as a station for students to come around to, then they can you know, play them right from here. And you can kind of take turns and kids can rotate through and that's no problem. And you can do that all without making any student accounts at all. Okay, I see a question about uh, French, yes. You can change the language um, and, and have that feedback and stuff come up in French. 
Um, I haven't played with that a whole lot, so I'm not a super expert at that yet, but I'd be glad to support you with that. Um, if you try it out and are having trouble, just let me know and, and we can troubleshoot that together. So let's say you are in, for example, a contained special education classroom, or maybe you're a, a teacher in a mainstream classroom, but you need to differentiate, you know, quite a bit. So making individual student accounts is actually a necessity for you. In that case, you'll come up to the students menu and you can go to student management and you'll see your list of students. And your screen will look a bit different than mine. When you scroll down on your screen, you'll see a green button down here that says add now, and it will let you add a new student account. Um, mine's a bit different because I'm in like a peel board level account. Um, but when you click on add now, it just brings up a form to fill out. It's very straightforward. All that we ask is for consistency's sake, if you use the student's six digit peel student number as their user ID, um, and their login, that will keep it consistent if, if students are moving from school to school. That way we're not recreating the same student accounts over and over. Um, so you'll see I did that with all of these students right here. It's their Peel student um, number. Uh, and then it asks you to pick a password as well. You can set the password to anything you like. Just make it something easy for you to remember or use the same password that the students would use to log into the computer with. Um, that will keep it simple for them. Once you've um, done that and you have individual students back in the classroom view, you know, they'll all be right there. And then you just click on whichever student you'd like and it uh, brings it up. So that is using either my classroom view as with my playlist or assigning to individual students. Now, if you want to do that same thing on an iPad, you can. Um, on the iPads, you'd have to install the Boardmaker Student Center app. Uh, and it's a free app, um, so you just have to put in a heat web and request that it be added to your school iPads. And then um, you open it up, and the very first time you use it, it asks you to set it up, and it asks you for your account ID. When you're on your home page of Boardmaker, and you scroll down a little bit, you're going to see your own name. And then right underneath of that, right here, it has your account ID. And that's what you'll put into the iPad um, to set it up for the very first time. Once you've done that the one time, it'll remember it after that. Um, but that's just how it knows that, hey, you're from Peel. Everyone in Peel has the same account ID. Um, I see Mandy's asking, how do you add students? You would add students by going to students and student management, and then you'll see a green button there that says add now. And so you just manually have to, you know, fill it out for each student you'd like to add. Um, and like I said, my account's a bit different, so mine doesn't show up in the same spot as yours, so I can't actually demonstrate it for you. Um, but you're just here at student management, and then scroll down, you'll see it, it's green, it's very obvious, you just click add now. And you can make as many student accounts as you need, not a problem. But again, keep in mind whether or not you need to do that, because in most cases, you, you really wouldn't need student accounts. So it's your call, whether or not that's applicable for you. Okay. Good. Okay, I'm glad that makes sense. Um, the question is, did you say an email was sent with an account for us? So your Boardmaker account to log in to my Boardmaker or to Boardmaker online in general, if you signed up for this session through my learning plan, I made sure you had an account and it would have sent you an email from Boardmaker to, to trigger that setup process. If for some reason we missed you or it didn't come through, um, just reach out to your school ATRT or reach out to me. That's fine as well and we'll make sure you get an account set up. Um, don't go sign up for an account on Boardmaker Online yourself. Uh, if you do so, it will give you like a 30 day free trial, but then it'll expire and, and you won't 
have access anymore. If you set it up through us, you'll have the full subscription and, and we've paid for it already. So I know that's a bit of a pain. You kind of have to wait for us to get around to it, but we're pretty quick. Okay. So another thing I would like to show you is for those of you that would like to print out visuals, if you've used BoardMaker in the past, um, that's something you're, you're probably used to doing. So you can still do that with this as well. Um, so I'm going to go back to my board maker. And people are saying I had to create a password today for my account. Yeah, that's what would happen uh, if you um, were added by us, you would get an email, you would click on a link in it to set up your password. Uh, and it takes, you know, a couple of steps to get everything sorted, but uh, we can always help you if you're having any trouble with that. All right, so I'm back here in my board maker. I'm going to go back to create activity. This time, instead of choosing um, one of the templates to make an interactive activity, I'm actually going to choose new blank activity. Now, I don't like making things from scratch if I want to do an interactive thing because the coding to make the activity work um, is, is challenging. But if you just want to print stuff out, it's often easier to make things um, from scratch. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to come out to File and go to Page Setup. And by default, it's set for this, the shape of a monitor. I'm going to change that to the shape of letter paper. I'm even going to make it portrait. That way, what I'm seeing on the screen and what prints out will kind of match a bit better. So it just looks like a normal sheet of paper. Then along the top here, I have these different tools. I'm going to click on the button tool. And I'm going to drag out a button, however big I need it to be. And I'm paying attention to the rulers at the top and the side. Um, they're measuring for me how big this button actually is. And this now I've created one that is one inch by one inch. I can make it bigger. I can make it whatever size I need. But I'm just going to create one button. And then if I click over to this tool here, it looks like four buttons together. This is the spray tool. And now this one's magical. If I just click and drag, it will spray out that first button and create a whole bunch more that exact same size and a nice neat array for me, um, which makes it easier to print out a whole bunch. Because chances are you're making some kind of visual schedule. You're making a whole bunch of the same thing at once. And then editing these is just the same as what we did with the interactive activities. You just click on it, start typing, hit enter, pick your symbol, You know, you just keep going, you fill out as many as you need. And then when you're ready to print, you know, just go file, print page, and you're good to go. Now let's say you were printing a lot of symbols and you needed more than one page. You can open up the page sorter on the side. That's this button on the top left that slides this out. And I have a couple of choices. I can add a new blank page defaults back to that other size. The other thing I can do is I can click on this little gear. I can copy a page and then I can paste that same page and you'll see now I have two copies of it. And the second page I might not need you know these same things again. I might be doing different things. So again I don't need to delete it. I just click on it and overwrite what was already there. Hit enter, pick a new symbol. And then I can keep customizing as many as I need. And so then when I print out the whole activity, it'll print every page and I don't have to do it one page at a time. So hopefully that makes sense. 
Um, I'm gonna go to this blank page here and show you one other tool I really like if you're ever making social stories for a student. Um, so maybe a student um, who has autism, who you know struggles with some transitions and you wanna make a social story about it, or even you're just making a class book with your class, doesn't matter. Uh, it's this tool right here. It's called the Symbolate tool. It looks like an A and then a little head. And when I click on that, I then have to click and drag out a text box. So in this case, I'm just going to drag a nice and big text box, almost as big as my whole page. And then I start typing sentences. So today was Thursday. Oops. I didn't mean to delete that. I'm going to hit undo. Okay. Come on. We went to the library. Anyways, you can see I can keep going on and on forever. Now it's pretty small. If I like, I can come over here to this properties bar. I can customize things. I can choose a different font if I like. I can increase the size of the font. I can change the font color. You know, all that stuff you can do on a, a word processor you can do here. Now I'm thinking the symbols are too small. I want them to be bigger. So you can come here to symbol height. It's thinking about it. Well, it doesn't want to increase my symbol height for me today, but usually you just click right here and it'll make it bigger. Um, and that will, you know, automatically, as you type the sentence, I didn't have to pick those symbols. They're just showing up on top. Oh, there it goes. It finally made them bigger for me. Now, maybe it picked a symbol that you don't particularly like. If you double click on any symbol, it will bring up the symbol picker and you can pick something different that you like better. Um, and then for example, maybe you don't want a symbol over every word, like the word the, I don't really need a symbol for that. You can double click on it and you can choose no symbol. So maybe you just provide that visual support for the keywords uh, in this text. And this is a great way to support our English language learners, uh, our emergent readers, and just any student that needs a little extra support with reading, give them that visual clue as, what, as to what's going on and what the meaning of the sentences are. So that can be a great way to do that as well. Okay, at this point, do we have any questions about creating either with the templates or creating anything from scratch? I'm not seeing any questions come up yet. If you're still in the middle of typing, no worries. Keep going. I'll get to it when it comes in. Um, can you repeat this current activity? Just so show you one more time. Sure. I'm going to add a new blank page again. I'm coming up to the symbol eat tool. I click on it once and then I just click and drag out a box. And then as soon as I have that text box, I can type inside of it. And just as I'm typing, it's automatically pulling up those symbols. Uh, we will explore and learn as we go, I guess, how to use the, these activities with students. 
Yeah, you do explore and learn as you go for sure. It takes a little while to get comfortable with uh, editing things with BoardMaker. Um, it probably took me at least three different sessions of sitting down with it and really taking the time to create something. It helps to have a specific goal in mind. Like, you know, you're teaching a unit about community helpers. So you're going to come in here and you're going to create all kinds of stuff connected to community helpers. That way you already have your ideas and you know exactly what your students need. And it's a great way to create modified curriculum for those students in your class who maybe have some additional needs above and beyond the rest of your students, but you still want them to be doing an activity connected to what everyone else in the room is doing. So they're feeling included and they're able to show you what they know at their level. So it's great for that. Of course, you could use this with your whole class. Typically, um, it's something though more for those students that need some extra additional support or ad additional modifications. Um, and yeah, those French teachers that have joined us for sure, it'd be great. And French language learners are a lot like English language learners. They need the same kind of visual supports, the same as, as them. So absolutely, I could see tons of, of applications for this in French class. And how to use the activities with students. Um, it's just a matter of either you log in on your account and pull up your my classroom view and you can kind of do stuff together as like a guided lesson or personally i would do it as like a center so you have a couple of computers or a couple of devices um, and you get kids to kind of rotate through it so you just pull this up you know click on yourself have all of your activities um, and you can even give students some choice. If you have a bunch of activities here kind of all connected to the topic you're learning, they can come along and pick their favorite one to play. Gives them a lot of repetition, a lot of practice um, for those students that need that. Well, don't we all? And, you know, and that's awesome. Uh, doing it on the iPads as well is, is great. Um, it is super simple. It does sync automatically. Um, the iPad looks exactly like this My Classroom view. It is identical. It's just the way to, to see it on an iPad. Now, one thing I will show you um, is maybe you've now moved on to a different unit of study and you want to remove some things from your playlist um, because you no longer need to be practicing those things. Of course, you could leave them there for review if students want to go back to them. That's that's awesome. Um, but here on my board maker, if you click over to my playlist, you will see everything that is currently on your playlist. And um, let's say you're done with this match and memory count me in activity. You come over to the right beside it and there is an X and you just click on the X. Do you really want to remove it from your playlist? Yes, I do. And now that particular activity, you haven't deleted it. It's not gone it's still going to be here in your my activities it's just not on your playlist anymore so it doesn't show up when you launch your my classroom view so that's just a way where you can have tons and tons of activities kind of in your files but limit the choices that the students have uh, the same account can be logged into multiple chromebooks and ipads yes absolutely uh, and how do they access it from home if you would like students to access this from home, you will have to create individual student accounts. So I wouldn't give the students your username and password. Obviously, you wouldn't want to do that. So if you want them to be able to, to do homework, you would have to create accounts for each of your students. Um, and then, is it still in here? Let's see. There was a spot where they had, yeah. So. I went up here to the upper right hand corner and I see my name right there and I just clicked on my account. And then they have, you know, your profile where you can, you know, edit your username and things like that. Uh, then they have this little button right here for student access. And so now that I've clicked on that, it's showing me the instructions. So you would just read through this. You might even be able to, um, print off different things from here, and that would let them be able to log in at home. I 
it's saying here there's a there's a button to press to send parents an email. I wouldn't bother with that. Um, if you just give students the link right here, give them the instructions, that's probably best. Similar to Prodigy, yeah, it is similar to Prodigy in that way. So create a little letter or whatnot to send home to parents to, sh to tell them how, and then that would work. Um, would they log in with their uh, Google accounts? No, um, it wouldn't be their Google account. It would be whatever username and password you put in when you made their BoardMaker account. So when you go to your student management section and you click on your green add now button, you get to pick their username and password. So put their peel six digit student number, password, you decide whatever is appropriate. And then that's what they would need uh, as well to log in. Okay. Um, that is it for what I plan to show you tonight. If you have some additional questions, feel free to keep asking. I will stick around as long as questions keep coming in. Um, other than that, I do want to encourage you to reach out to your assistive technology resource teacher if you have, um, you know, any other, or you need any other support with BoardMaker Online. We are glad to come in um, and help you troubleshoot um, and kind of play around with with creating these things um, because we know it's really going to support those students with special education needs and of course you know what's good for some is often great for all as well um where do we choose the language now i'm gonna have to play around because i haven't tried that too much like in google read and write yeah it's not quite like uh, google read and write as far as the language is let's just see if i can quickly see where that might be I'm just going to create a new activity and see if I can make it French for you. I'm not sure if we do it by setting the activity to French or whether we do it by setting the student's account to French. It's got to be one or the other. We'll see if we can figure it out. Yeah, I'm not seeing it there. Uh, you know what, Dorina? It might be something where I got to take some time and play with it myself, and I can figure out exactly where you go to make, make that happen, and then I can get back to you on that. Yeah, it's, I know it's in here somewhere. I'm just blanking right now where exactly that is. Um, if you send me an email to remind me, I will make sure to get back to you with exactly how to do that. And maybe I'll make a little a quick YouTube video to put on this channel for everyone to see of, of how to take board maker stuff and make it French. Um, but I've got to do some playing to remind myself how that works. I do know it's possible though. Uh, Melanie, she said she just typed in French. Yeah, that would work. Um, but the voice that pronounces things might not be quite right. Um, so there is a way to actually switch the voice of the computer person to pronounce things a bit better as well. But yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good idea too. If you're in the community and we search for French things in here, Yeah, you might be able to find all kinds of stuff. There you go. And then whatever you find, you can edit and tweak. So, oh, perfect, right? You might not even have to make anything. Very cool. Let's see if this person who made this activity actually made it. 
That's right. Oh no, it's still the picture that goes with the word law table. It's still saying it with an English accent. I mean, it's still great practice, um, but I will fiddle around with that some more and get back to you all on that. Yeah, you're welcome everyone. Thank you all so much for taking the time to come out. Um, the recording for this will show up on the same link in about an hour or so from now once it processes and you can always come back and review it whenever you need to. Um, if you still have any more questions, I'll stick around. But otherwise, of course, have a great night for those of you that are, are done watching. Yeah, absolutely. You could use this for any subject at all, for sure. It's good to see a lot of people learned a lot tonight. That's awesome. Like I said, it is a lot. It does take time to play with. Um, so do, you know, let your brain forget it a bit and then come back to it again maybe next week and see if, if it still makes sense. Um, but refer to the link in the video description. It has like little visual, little quick clips of how to do these different things I showed you tonight or come back and watch the video again whenever you need. I don't know if you guys can see my cats are both back there sleeping away in the background. Good night, everyone. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions coming in, so I will assume that everyone got their questions answered for now. Um, like I said, as you keep going, uh, more questions will come up. You'll get stuck at certain points maybe and then be like, help. And just reach out to us via email, either your school HERT or myself, and we'll, we'll help you along. All right, that's it. Good night, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Uh, there will be another webinar next Thursday about uh, using Smart Notebook. Now, that's not a piece of software that everyone in Peel has access to, so it'll be more, most applicable for those of you that work in contained classrooms that have a smart board. And I'll look forward to seeing you guys then if you're if you're coming up for that one. Bye. Good night.